Welcome to Real Possibilities with AARP, because AARP believes no one's possibilities should ever be limited as they age. Hi, I'm Elaine Werner. I am your host for today's program. I'm on staff with the AARP nonprofit statewide office, where we do advocacy and community outreach. And we come to you in your local community with AARP's purpose in mind, and that is to empower you to choose how you live as you age. We feel empowered to Today because we have some new technology. We are coming to you via Zoom so that we can now come to you wherever we are at in the state. And you're going to be empowered with some information, how you can apply for some grants uh, to help enhance your community, make your community more livable, more beautiful, uh, more accessible for any age person. So whatever age you are today, you hear the word ARP, you can watch this program. We've got information for anybody from any age. So we are going to get to my guest in just just a moment, but a little preface. My guest today is Diane Stone. She is the director of the Newington Senior and Disabled Center. And Diane is with us today because Diane uh, Center has been the recipient of a grant uh, from AARP Connecticut to help enhance Newington, Connecticut, and a super big project uh, coming from the national office. We'll tell you about that as well. And uh, I do want to mention that the Newington Senior and Disabled Center is in the, the first in the state of Connecticut to be nationally a Accredited, another distinction for them. They have uh, about 140 volunteers, 3,500 members in Newington, and the Newington Senior and Disabled Center partners with ARP Connecticut for community outreach programs right in their community. We'll talk about those as well. We do want to mention any of the initiatives, the outdoor initiatives or the uh, community presentation initiatives that uh, we mentioned in today's program that we all follow CDC state and local health guidelines. So, uh, Diane, come on board. Let's introduce you to the audience of our public access TV station. Today it's called Great Places for All Ages. And welcome, Diane. A pleasure to have you. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for having me. Sure. So we're going to talk about how um, the uh, programs you've done in Connecticut via ARP are intergenerational. But first, let's talk about you, Diane. I know you have been for many, many, many years uh, servicing and supporting the older Americans in the Newington, Connecticut community as director of your center. How did you land on that? How did you become focused and passionate about servicing this demographic? Oh, thanks for asking. So yeah, I've been here 23 years now, which um, amazes me every time I say it. Um, but I actually came here from Canada. I was born and raised in Canada. And uh, I had always been working with people, but I'd been working with people with developmental disabilities, and I worked in the mental health system. And I was really looking for an opportunity. I had a degree in gerontology, mm -hmm. and I wanted to kind of put that to more use. So I happened to be on vacation. I was in Connecticut. This job opportunity came up and I had never been in a senior center before, mm -hmm. um, but just saw this tremendous opportunity and thought it was interesting. And, and I've been here ever since. Well, you know, Diane, we talk about serendipity in life. It sounds like it was meant to be for some reason in the right place at the right time. And, and we're so glad that uh, you assumed that role and ARP loves partnering with your center. Now, the name of your center also is Newington Senior and Disabled Center. Mm -hmm. Not all the older American senior centers in the state have disabled center in the name. Uh, what's the distinction of that, Diane? Yeah, so I think we're, that we're the only one. And the beauty of senior centers um, is that they're really community driven responses to uh, helping people age in the community. And in Newington, back in 1985, when they were starting to uh, modify this building for a center, um, there was a strong uh, advocacy group for people with disabilities who said, We think that it should be expanded, not just be about age. It should include people that maybe are under the age of 55. Um, that are looking for opportunities for the same kinds of things. So uh, we embraced it and we've been the senior and disabled center ever since. Well, and that, that sort of makes it intergenerational too because that runs the gamut, am I correct, of all different ages? Absolutely, so we focus on adults. We don't do uh, children's programming, but we leave okay. that to the Board of, Board of Education and Parks and Rec. But okay. um, So our age eligibility is 55, but we don't card at the door. We're available for anybody. Our programs are, you know, Monday through Friday during the daytime. So if you're at home and you're looking for the kinds of, of activities that we do, uh, we're open to multi-generations. And in fact, we do have, just within our age eligibility, we have three generations of people 
uh, who come to the Senior and Disabled Center. Well, and I, you, that was a good segue, Diane, because I was just about to get to that. Now, I'm a baby boomer, uh, obviously, uh, but you've talked about three different generations uh, that you have as your community that comprise your demographics. So, so what are those three, Diane? Yeah, so the greatest generation, right? That's the World War I, World War II era uh, generation. And that's who really started senior centers. Um, and you think about the kind of things they like to do. They like to get together for... Uh, potluck dinners, and this was mm. the pre-TV era, right? Um, and we still have people that are coming. I, I, I mentioned to you before one of our uh, participants, Rose, who's going to yeah. be 102 in October, still an active participant here. Um, then you have the silent generation, and this is the pre-boomer generation, and they took kind of all of the programs and activities of a senior center and institutionalized them, right? So they gave rise to from a potluck supper to a congregate meal. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, of course, the next generation, the boomers. And um, the boomers now, totally different thing, right? Grew up in a totally different era, um, really transforming how we see and do everything. So, and we're starting to see boomers coming in now. Well, another great segue, because again, I'm, I'm a baby boomer, you know, and I think about as I age, would I be inclined to reap the benefits of a community center such as yours, or is there a stigma, an age stigma to that? Diane, do you see, uh, you know, each generation obviously ages differently, you just pointed that out. Do you see uh, your center or others changing for the different demographics of how we age? Absolutely, and I think it's something that senior centers have to do. We have to transform. And I think that we have a long and proud history of doing just that. And if you go way, way back into the 20s, that's really where senior centers got their start. Um, they started in Menlo Park, California. And really it was kind of wealthy um, people, you know, doctors and lawyers, who were really looking at um, the people that worked for them and seeing that for them to be able to retire, they needed some kind of economic security. So senior centers kind of started as these advocacy groups that would meet in people's mm. homes. And of course, they fought for and won social security. Yep. So after you get social security, they're, you know, they've won the battle, what are they gonna do? And they realized they really liked that socialization that they were getting meeting at each other's homes. So then senior centers kind of evolved into more social recreation type things. The kind of clubs uh, until the 60s when we got the Older Americans Act and senior centers transformed again and you know the Older Americans Act really looked at how do we help people live in the community um, and live well and so the first kind of modern day senior centers started and they were really meant to fight social isolation and malnutrition among community dwelling older adults and did a really fantastic job of that but you kind of get the social service uh, element into senior centers at that point. And we, we haven't lost any of the previous elements. We, we continue to evolve with that. And right now we're evolving into more of the health and wellness, right? So looking at what people are looking for, we still do the advocacy, we still do the uh, social and recreational programs, we still do the social services, and now we're moving more into fitness and wellness. And really trying to meet people where they are. So um, I think your question of, is it something that you would wanna do? I hope so, I hope so. And, and if not, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Well, I, I've seen your place in action and you do a fabulous job and there's people coming and going with 3,500 members. Obviously, uh, there's enough for everybody there. Uh, and, you know, uh, Diane, you're reminding me of our founder, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrews, because she actually started chapters with ARP prior to senior centers. So some yeah. people say that the chapters for ARP were sort of the uh, precursor uh, to that. And you mentioned, you know, social sociability, social isolation. We're so concerned with that more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, interesting you talk about the chapters because mm -hmm. before the Senior and Disabled Center was here in 1985, you know, there was a senior citizens club and that was kind of that uh, greatest generational kind of thing where let's get together and let's do things together. And we also, we had a senior club here. We also had two chapters of the ARP. The first chapter got so big, they couldn't admit any more people. So mm -hmm. they had to start a second chapter. Um, but just like AARP has evolved, so our chapters have now folded, our senior club is now folded. 
Right. Um, and, and that's a natural progression right. because generations change. So. Right. Just, just like we've been talking, each generation right. ages differently. And Diane, I, I mentioned earlier on that we have partnered with you, ARP Connecticut, mm -hmm. uh, the nonprofit office and the Newington Senior and Disabled Center to bring programs to your members. Uh, two, I just want to highlight, uh, we have something called the Caregiver Roadshow where we bring resources into the community. If you're currently a caregiver, and certainly that's becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, or you want to know about caregiving before you hit a crisis or you're in need, we can provide resources for that. And also our ever popular Fraud Watch Network. You know, again, whatever age you are watching this program today, uh, fraud hits all of us. Uh, you see emails or websites that just maybe don't look right, maybe they're not. We've got a really comprehensive website aarp.org slash fraud watch. We'll put all this information up on the screen plus Diane's um, center, their, their uh, website as well. But uh, we love partnering with you and I know your members enjoy it as well. Oh, absolutely. So I think um, we really see our role as facilitating access to things. We're good at mobilizing the community and getting them here. And we really love when uh, an organization like AARP brings in these really expert and and, and well curated resources for us and presents these programs and a couple of your other programs i mean dating myself here 55 alive that's now the safe driving program is a right. staple um and the aarp tax aid program right. uh, we right. could not do without so we're we're really happy to partner with the aarp and and you know together we bring great things so Great, I, I'm so glad you mentioned, yes, the uh, driver safety and the tax aid program as well. And we wanna remind uh, all of you whether ARP is coming to you, partnering with Diane and the Newington Senior and Disabled Center or wherever we're at in the community that we all follow CDC state and local uh, health guidelines more than ever. So now we're gonna get to, um, the fact that Diane, uh, another distinction with Newington, uh, we said first accredited senior center, uh, but you have also recently been a recipient of a Connecticut uh, livable community grant. And Connecticut has been, uh, ARP Connecticut has been able to offer that. We do that in the uh, second half of the year, uh, but Diane won a grant. These are um, grants that can go anywhere from hundreds of dollars to 2,500. They're for short projects, but they're about enhancing the community, uh, making it more livable and intergenerational. So uh, Diane, briefly tell us about you, what you did uh, with the money and the park and the tables and the game. And we're gonna, we're gonna put up a photo too as you're talking, Diane, as you give us a, a visual and, and we'll actually see it in action. Sure, so um, we're really happy about this because you talked about my center and we do great things. We bring people here and we do great things, but 27% of our community are older adults. We don't want all of them coming to our, our center. We wanna make sure that all of the facilities and features in Newington are intergenerational and work for everybody. So we applied for it and, and um, won some funding to purchase accessible game tables. Um, so th these are outdoor tables that are you know, fixed in place um, that have an inlaid section in the middle that is like a checkerboard so, or a chessboard, depending on which game you like to play. Um, so those are going into uh, one of the community parks and they're meant to create an intergenerational space. It's important that they're accessible. So they're gonna be, you know, the seating is accessible as is the entrance to it and, and access to it. Um, and then we're gonna be providing the game materials. And with between the Parks and Recreation Department and the Senior and Disabled Center, we're gonna schedule some uh, activities where people of different generations can come mm. together and play games. So Love it's, that. Sometimes the really simple approaches uh, can be the most impactful. Well, and, and you know, whether you're, uh, you live in Newington or you don't, wherever you're watching this program, come and visit uh, Diane's uh, location. And the name of the park, Diane? Uh, we're gonna have tables in Clem Lemire Park. Right. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. that's where you go. Uh, you can find it, or you've got. You're going to have Diane's contact numbers, your email, her telephone number, and her website on this uh, the screen. I love that intergenerational. I have a vision. I remember in the old days, you'd see pictures of little kids playing with older people playing chess together. So uh, exactly. kind of that vision. Exactly. Yeah. And studies show that you know kids playing games with older adults actually improves academic performance for children. So. Great. 
and great brain activity for older people. It's Absolutely. A, it's a win, win, win for the community older and uh, younger. And Diane, I also want to, uh, you know, this other distinction that I love. ARP, uh, when we, we turned 60, uh, we're a little bit over uh, 60, not me personally, I'm older than that, but uh, uh, as a, an organization when we were founded in 1958, and in order to honor our 60th plus anniversary, ARP National Office decided to launch an initiative uh, in all 50 states, plus the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the District of Columbia, and they uh, have launched these fitness parks, and I'm proud to say uh, for Diane in Connecticut that Newington, Connecticut is a site for one of them. So depending on when you're watching the show, uh, either it has been built, it's in the process thereof, or people are already using it. Uh, but it, it keeps in mind when you apply for this, and we're going to put the website up on the uh, screen. Let me just mention it now that it is um, uh, ARP.org slash community challenge for national grants. This is a separate thing. I'll get to that in a moment. But um, if you if you Google fitness parks on our national website, you'll get to see more information uh, on it. But it fosters healthy habits. Uh, we want it to be enjoyed by residents of all ages. And Diane, I know that um, your municipality has worked with ARP on this. Any comments from you about the evolution, the building, the whatever of the fitness park? Yeah, so we're really excited about this. This is um, not a, a small thing. Um, although the park is not huge, it's an adult fitness park that's built on a rubberized surface uh, that has adult fitness equipment. And uh, it, it is built. Um, I saw it and it, it's not in use yet, but it's, the construction is finished. Um, but this is going also in Clem Lemire Park. And Clem Lemire is an athletic park. So this is a park where we have football, we have baseball, the skate park, um, kind of viewed maybe as a younger person's park. And this is truly making Clem Lemire an intergenerational athletic park where, you know, we have uh, grandparents and parents who go to watch the kids play. Well, now they can go and exercise as well. So you also are going to get kids that are going to watch older adults exercise and, you know, really set up that this is a lifelong thing, staying fit. So uh, we were so happy to be awarded this one. Our Parks and Rec Department has just knocked it out of the park and getting it installed. And, uh, you know, we're really excited about the grand opening and, and just getting to use it. We're going to have fitness classes there. Um, cool. We're going to use our dial-a-ride buses to bring people. And it, we see a lot of use coming out of this park. So really happy about it. And, and I love what you're doing. You're sort of integrating the whole thing, creating activities, getting transportation there, uh, the intergenerational nature of it, beautifying, enhancing your community. Uh, I love all of the above. And uh, Diane, we mentioned, so you won the, uh, Newington won the Connecticut grant that happens in the second half of the year. We're going to do a fitness park uh, in Newington. Uh, it could have been built by the time you're watching this uh, show already. One of 53 locations in uh, the country. And we also wanted to mention that we have um, a program that you can apply for for a national grant. That happens in the first half of the year. Uh, now, these projects, again, go from uh, several hundred dollars to tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, so you can get all the particulars of that. What are the criteria to apply? Again, if you want to call me directly, I can certainly point you in the right direction. I'm Elaine Warner. I'm on staff with the ARP office. You can call me directly, 860-548-3169. And we're going to roll tape right now so you get an idea of what it looks like for what's happening with the grants from the national office all over the country. So take a moment and roll tape. The mats will help all of us. All ages and all abilities can benefit from this kind of technology. We're trying to understand what are the best ways to reach out to the older population, but then also to the rest of the community. We want people to succeed in our communities, whether they're 5, 50, or 150. We don't give the grantees a lot of time to put this together, uh, and that's intentional, so that the community can really come together, coalesce around a project, and get it done. The mats are portable, non-slip, roll-up beach mats, and will serve our needs for years to come. None of this would have been possible without AARP's help. The lighting was one of the biggest pieces that the community wanted to see 
not only within the park, but just generally within the, the neighborhood. The challenge grant is helping us look at wayfinding in the buildings that we're more likely to see our older adults enter. It's really hard to put a number or a dollar amount on a project that really just improves and beautifies a space, which is why the grant from AARP was a perfect match for this project. The AARP grant has allowed us to study different ways to incentivize seniors to participate in our VIA Rideshare program and our Jump Bike Share programs. I'm all signed up and ready to go. It's a pilot program called My House, My Home, and it's designed specifically to work with uh, low-income senior homeowners who are at risk of losing their house. All right, please don't. <laughs> so this is a more playful approach to our typical bus stop shelters. It's going to allow some of our seniors to have a seat while they're waiting for the bus. So I think it's an absolute fabulous idea. The small investment of money is going to reap tremendous rewards for the community for years to come. We're honored to be selected to get the grant and we will put it to good use, I can guarantee you that. Wasn't that great? The people talking about all things all over the country, and it brings together people that are 5, 50, 100 plus. We say having a livable community begins with uh, from the cradle to 100 plus, just you know, small projects that can um, keep giving back year after year after year. So uh, again, aarp.org slash community challenge. Uh, we want to make your, your communities more vibrant. Uh, increased civic engagement, uh, transportation is critical, affordable housing, these are all things you can look at when you apply for that. Uh, Diane, I, one other distinction I know that um, the Newington Senior Center and Disabled Center, where you are the director, uh, has a program called the Aging Mastery Program. And I know that there's a distinction to that. T tell our viewer a little bit about that program as well, if you will. Sure, this is a program of the National Council on Aging, and we do it uh, through the Connecticut Healthy Living Collective here in Connecticut. It, it's in over 30 sites now, um, but it was a program we were actually one of five sites chosen by the National Council on Aging to help co-create it a number of years ago. It is a 10-week program that focuses on things you can do to age well. Each week, we introduce a different topic. We bring in an expert speaker. It's everything from physical activity, healthy eating, advanced planning, better sleep. Mm -hmm. um, it, we bring in an, an expert. We give credible, resourceful information. We help people to set goals for small steps for big impact, and we give feedback on it. So it's a really, really great program. Um, probably one of the best programs I've done here in the time that I've been here. And again, that is called the Aging Mastery Program. We're talking to Diane Stone. Diane is the director of the Newington Senior and Disabled Center. And Diane, uh, if somebody wanted to, um, obviously you have to be, uh, well, you, you, you have to be a member of the Newington Center or you can apply for this if you're not. Yeah, so if we're offering it, generally we don't require membership to do that program, but the Connecticut Healthy Living Collective, so cchealthyliving.org, um, has the listing of all of the programs that are happening across the state. So like I said, it's in 30 different sites right now. So should be in a community near you. And if it's not, talk to your community and ask them to get it. Great, and Diane, I'm also gonna uh, mention how to get in touch with you if needed, 860-665-8778. Uh, and you can reach Diane, this is gonna be on the screen, but dstone at Newington, Connecticut. Dot gov. Uh, very quickly, not much time left, Diane. I know that you have served on a transportation task force in the past. Transportation so critical to social ability, movement, keeping active, aging well. What was your role there, Diane? Uh, so I actually chaired that. It was a legislative task force, and it was really looking at best practices um, and challenges inherent with transportation for older adults and adults with disabilities. And um, as, as Kathy Greenlee used to be the Assistant Secretary um, for Aging with Health and Human Services, she used to call transportation her favorite hard problem, because it's a hard problem. Yep. But we really started looking at how do we start improving transportation and mobility. It's, it's really about mobility. 
um, for everybody in our communities. So a report is still pending on that. Um, we hope that uh, there'll be a lot more work that's done and, and a lot more collaborative stuff that happens around transportation. I think the resources are there in Connecticut. We just need to fit the pieces together a little bit better for people. Good. So we, we uh, appreciate your leadership on that issue. Uh, so important, again, when we talk about social isolationism. Just a reminder to all of you with the projects that we're talking about, the park initiatives, uh, community offerings that ARP partners with the Newington Senior Center and other places in the state, that we all follow CDC state and local health guidelines when we are out and about. Um, Diane, you've uh, mentioned that uh, it's not about growing old, it's about aging well, and that dovetails so beautifully uh, with where we start, started the program today that ARP's purpose is to empower people to choose how they live as they age. So that's a lasting thought that's gonna stay with me. Anything, any lasting thought from you uh, for our viewers being our guest today? Well, no, I, I'm really happy and grateful that AARP invited me today. And, and you know, I've known you for quite a while, Elaine. I look forward to continuing to work with you and with the team at AARP. Um, growing old is not an option, but aging well certainly is, and our goal is to help you do it. So uh, thank you very much. Fabulous, fabulous lasting thought. Thank you so much, Diane. So appreciate your leadership in the community, in the state, and having you on the program. Thank you. And, and if you are watching today as an ARP member, we want to thank you for that. You are one of 600,000 people uh, that are members right here in the state of Connecticut. I'm Elaine Warner. I've been happy to be your host for our program today. Great places for all ages. We've been focusing on Newington, Connecticut with our guest, Diane Stone, who is the director of the Senior uh, Center in Newington, Senior and Disabled Center. Thanks, Diane. It's been a pleasure uh, having you with us. We so appreciate it. And uh, if you're interested in volunteering with ARP Connecticut, seek me out. Many opportunities. You might be interested in the subject that we're talking about today, livable communities. I can be reached directly, 860-548-3169. We look forward to coming back to seeing you you right here in your local community. Thanks for watching. We'll be back to see you soon, and we appreciate you tuning in. Thanks.